Each year, millions of people visit Savannah, Georgia, ambling lazily around the city's picturesque squares and trolleys and carriages, or strolling slowly down its tree-shaded lanes. Many come to see traces of the Old South or the city's famous connection with Civil War General William Tecumseh Sherman. But few are aware of another battle of Savannah that took place 85 years before Sherman arrived beneath the very streets they now traverse. Most uh, people even interested in American history had never really heard of the Battle of Savannah because you would rarely find it mentioned in history books. The truth is no secret to Preston Russell. A retired medical doctor, artist, author, and historian, Russell has spent years creating a small army of tiny figures from the past. The figures in my collection I'm proudest of and the most uh, in love with are the ones related uh, to the American Revolutionary period as well as uh, many of the figures who fought here in the 1779 uh, Battle of Savannah. Uh, it was the uh, first major international battle of the war in uh, 1779 and something like nine different nationalities fought here. French, German, British, Irish, Polish, Haitian, Scots, etc. So it was an incredibly exotic experience. Nothing like that had ever happened in America before in 1779. The battle could more accurately be called the Siege of Savannah. It began in early September 1779 when startled British lookouts saw dozens of French warships off the Georgia coast. The fleet's commander, Count Henri d'Estaing, smarting from charges of cowardice and disloyalty to the American cause, aimed to prove once and for all that he was a hero. Count d'Estaing uh, demanded a, a, a surrender not uh, to the Americans uh, but, all, but to the King of France, which uh, didn't sit too well with the American allies at the time. Well, the British uh, stalled for about uh, two or three days. A Scottish uh, uh, group they came over from, uh, from uh, Buford, South Carolina, by inland waterways under uh, the command of John Maitland, with about 800 troops, came in, snuck up the Savannah River by inland uh, waterways, and uh, reinforced the uh, small British force here at Savannah. The delay and subsequent reinforcement gave the British the boost they needed to resist the French and American attackers. While his officers argued for patience so they could slowly take the city, Destang worried for the safety of his waiting fleet, already buffeted by one tropical storm and now vulnerable to the onset of the dangerous hurricane season. Early on the morning of October 9th, he ordered a surprise attack on the British fortifications on the western edge of the city, focused at an earthen fortification known as the Spring Hill Redoubt. A trader, an American trader from Charleston, gave the British the uh, word that there was going to be a surprise, so-called surprise attack at dawn. And uh, then uh, uh, it was supposed to happen at dawn, but uh, the, there was a lot of confusion because uh, both the French and the Americans uh, did not know the terrain, and so so a lot of time was wasted. So by the time they attacked, uh, there was uh, there was no surprise, and they were just slaughtered. Within a week, the French fleet left Georgia's shores for good and the American army retreated to Charleston, where it was forced to surrender just a few months later, one of the worst American losses of the war. The defeat at Savannah in 1779 helped cement Britain's firm control over the southern colonies, which was to last until the end of the Revolution. In late 2005, the trenches of the battlefield saw the light of day for the first time in 226 years. You know, it's always been the question of where is the readout located? It is right here. We are standing on the readout from the Revolutionary War. Archaeologist Rita Elliott, heading up a team from the nonprofit Coastal Heritage Society, led the digging that exposed the remains of the Spring Hill Readout, the earthen fortification in the British lines that took the brunt of the Allied French and American attack. The readout and other remains of the battlefield were destroyed just decades after the Revolution, when the Central of Georgia Railway flattened the site to create a massive repair shops, freight and passenger complex, which today comprise the Roundhouse Railroad Museum and Savannah History Museum. 
The city of Savannah purchased the last nine and a half acres of railroad land in 2003, and it was here that Rita and her team started their search. It wasn't long before the earth yielded up hints of what happened here in 1779. So we can see where the post used to be based on the stain in the soil when it rots. And the neat thing about this feature... What happened was we found a stain and we knew it was the same, we knew it was a feature, but we didn't think it was a very old feature. Um, it was a, a stain in the ground. And it turned out that that stain was actually the readout, evidence of the readout. It was the ditch work we were looking for. Well, thanks. It wasn't until we started excavating it that we discovered it really was the readout. We um, excavated, we saw by the shape that it was a ditch, and then everything we found in it was Rev War period. It was all military and it was all um, related to the battle, so that was the real clincher. It would have been sort of like that on the gun. But the battle stretched far beyond the Spring Hill Redoubt, with earthworks and fortifications scattered throughout what is now downtown Savannah. Using the latest in computer technology, the team overlaid historic maps of the battle onto modern street maps of the city, looking for spots where fortifications matched up with modern green spaces, undeveloped areas like parks and squares. One of the challenges we have with locating things on these maps or trying to find which ones lie in green space today, because if there's a big shopping center on top of it or housing or all that sort of thing, not only does it cover it up, but in most cases, it would have destroyed a lot of the features. Much of the work took place in Madison Square on picturesque Bull Street, ironically site of a monument to William Jasper, one of the heroes of the 1779 battle. It's perfect, you know, I mean, talk about your photo ops. We're digging up part of the revolutionary battle which William Jasper gave his life, and he's right there overlooking us. It's, it's, it's pretty good karma, actually. The dig unfolded in full view of residents and throngs of tourists. Oh my goodness, what's going on? And I was fascinated to see what they're doing here. This is great. This is wonderful. To have all this Revolutionary War stuff that went on right across the street from your house, and they're fi actually finding things, it's marvelous. Well, it's just pretty amazing. You know, the last time this was used was during the battle. But surprisingly, some of the most valuable artifacts are actually pieces of brick rubble, reminders of what unfolded here two and a quarter centuries ago. This very spot was the site of an Allied false attack on the British Central Redoubt, which was built of bricks from a barracks that once stood on the spot. The bricks told an interesting story. They did. Um... The whole idea was um, the Allies were trying to make the British think they were going to attack the Central Redoubt, when in reality they were sneaking around to attack Spring Hill. So we went over to Madison Square and uh, just nailed it right on the money. That kind of surprised me that we were able to get it in our first test unit there. You don't get that a lot in archaeology. But as exciting as that field work can be, it's hours of tedious work in a basement lab that really helps historians make the past become clear. Here, archaeologist Laura Seifert begins the task of cataloging the thousands of artifacts unearthed during the digs. Um, whenever I start to wash, I first initially sort all the artifacts to uh, make sure that there's nothing delicate in there or some types of metals need to be um, dry brushed and not dipped into the water because they'll continue to degrade. The artifacts dry overnight in trays inside a locked cabinet. Then Seifert sorts through what she's cleaned. Um, taking notes and keeping track of where we found all the artifacts is actually the most important part of what we do. It's not just what types of artifacts we find, but it's how we find them, in what combination, how deep, um, wh where we find the artifacts, in fact, is some of the most important information that we have. So keeping track of each bag of artifacts and where each one was found is vital. Later, Laura takes those bags, hundreds of them, and enters the data into her computer so future researchers can make sense of what's been found. Making the database of all the artifacts is a tool that helps us ask questions of the data and understand what the data is telling us so that we can find out what happened. As the archaeologist work continues, the Coastal Heritage Society is nearly finished building a monument to the battle that took place here, the new 1779 Battlefield Memorial. This spot 
in my opinion, is the most significant spot in Georgia relating to the Revolutionary War. The memorial consists of a field of 800 granite stones, commemorating as a group the 800 French and American soldiers killed or wounded here in less than one hour. Matter of fact, Savannah uh, it ranks along with Bunker Hill as one of the two bloodiest battles of the entire American Revolution. That's why it's important in terms of sacred ground. Donors are engraving the markers in honor of their ancestors and others who fought in the conflict and endowing the continued work at the memorial. Other groups have engraved stones in honor of the nations which contributed troops to the battle. At the end of the field, a revolutionary era American flag towers above the memorial. At the other end, a new earthen fortification helps visitors from around the world understand the layout of the ground for which so many bled and died. A monument from the turn of the last century, coincidentally placed atop the very spot where archaeologists located the corner of the real Spring Hill Redoubt, has been returned to its place of honor. Fire! Each year, early in the morning on the anniversary of the battle, people gather to march in the footsteps of the Allied French and American attackers. Well, we feel marching up the uh, Louisville Road, as the columns did, gives us a, a, a connection with the past. And we're literally marching where people were falling dead or wounded, you know, four or five a minute. But to think you are uh, really retracing the steps uh, right at dawn, uh, and heading towards the Spring Hill Redoubt is something that uh, anybody will surely must get some feeling that you are there. So it's authentic. It's not Disney World. It's where the actual battle took place. It's where people fought and died for America. It's the real deal. So be sure to experience the 1779 battle exhibit in the Savannah History Museum, including a detailed diorama created by Preston Russell, then visit the memorial to those who died here more than two centuries ago. And as you walk through the squares and parks of downtown Savannah, take care and remember, you may be walking in the footsteps of heroes.